Then he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you. But let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, No one having to put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. For my subject, I'm going to take your theme, preparing ourselves for the kingdom of God. Preparing ourselves. Kingdom of God. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you right now, Lord, knowing that you're God all by yourself, Father, just thanking your master for this opportunity to come before these your people and break the bread of life with them, dear God. And I thank you, God, for this preaching moment. A moment, God, well, I will uplift you. I will uplift your word to these folk. It is not me that that, that, that that does the power, have the power of convicting. It is your word, dear God. And I pray now that you will touch folk that need to be touched, dear God. I'll reach them, God, in their personal spaces. Father God, for you have made yourself available. And I ask you, Lord, to allow them to receive you. You made yourself available to come and sup with them. And I ask you, dear God, to let them have the heart of flesh today. Remove the heart of stone. Uh, let them receive what you have for them to, to hear them, God. I praise you, I honor you, I glorify you, God. Uh, let my mind be open and the tongue be loosened for what you have for me to say. Uh, it is Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. amen. For my subject, preparing ourselves for the kingdom of God. I want to encourage you Today, St. Andrews, to not become discouraged in your race of this discipleship. Keep on pressing toward the mark of the high call. If you keep on pressing, there is a reward there for your life. Just because of your obedience and that you receive, that you were given to God, there is a reward for you. On this earth. And there is a reward for you. In heaven. If you just keep on pressing. And endure to the end. I want you to. Encourage you to keep on. Diligently seeking God's face. I declare that. The work that you're doing. Is not in vain. Work that you're doing for God. Is, is not in vain. Everything works for the good of those who love the Lord. Them that are called according to his purpose may have some, some weary days, some hills to climb, some sleepless nights. As the songwriter says, I won't complain. I won't be complain because God is so good to me. I won't complain because God loves me. Jesus has confirmed that he loves us as God loves Christ. We are blessed according to his riches and glory. We have been inherited the riches and glory from God through his son Jesus Christ. You may be down today. The songwriter says it will not always be like this. It's going to perfect that which concerns me. And sooner or later it's going to work in my favor. It's going to turn it around for me. Today is your breakthrough day. It's going to turn it around for you. He that began a good work in you will complete it until the day of his coming. Don't wait church until the battle is over. Go ahead and shout now. Shout now because you're victorious in Jesus. Go ahead and let a praise go. The breakthrough is right here in this church. But I want to warn you, if you're a Christian just because of the benefits of having the title of Christian, then you may be in 
in the wrong relationship. If you're going through the motions, going through the motions, trying to, just because of the title Christian, then you may be in the wrong relationship. You're going to go through some stuff. God said, I will be with you. Only you say, Lord, I love you. God will come to your rescue. When you say you love, if you say that you love God, and you're only boasting about the material blessings and not the lessons in your trials and tribulations, then this race may not be the race that you need to run. I can testify that it's rough out here claiming God, trying to be faithful to Him. You're going to lose some friends along the way in this Christian journey. You're going to gain some enemies just because you claim Christ. Jesus said, if you confess me before me, him I will confess also before my Father which is in heaven. You see, you see, I can't deny God because he has been so good to me. I can't deny him because he has brought me through some stuff. I can't deny him because he keeps on making a way from me. I can't deny him because I know too much about him. I can't deny him because he has made himself too personal to me. I can't deny him because God loves me even when I didn't love myself. And God loved us so much until that he sent this son to die for the world that those that believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Because he knew who he was out in the world before you accepted him. And still Jesus decided that you were worthy to die for. He knew that you will be stiff-necked. But still Jesus hung on the cross for you. He knew that it would take some patience to work with you day in and day out. He knew that you'd be stuck on the same sin over and over again. Still Jesus thought you were worthy to die on the cross for you. He decided to make a substitution for you right there on Calvary's heels. That's why church, we owe him our life. We owe our life to God. Because although he knew no sin, although Jesus, he knew no sin, church, Jesus became sin for us. I want to inform you that you have the opportunity right now to give back to God by preparing yourself right now to enter to the kingdom of God. It's giving you another chance. Another chance to get it right. Yesterday doesn't matter. It only matters what you do this present time, this present situation. What are you going to do with your time with God? In this church, this, this holy place, he said that he will come and sup with you. If you seek his face, he will make a change with you. One more chance, church, to get it right. Family, I want you to know that this discipleship that we have is going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something. In order to be where Jesus is, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to cost you to make some sacrifices in your life. Luke 9, 23 Jesus said to the people, if anyone wants to come to me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. If you're going to prepare yourself for the kingdom of heaven, then you're first, number one, deny yourself and follow Christ. Deny yourself, follow Christ. Whatever your cross is, addictions or afflictions, Deny that cross. Do what you gotta do to let it go. Run away from it if you have to. Do what you
what you gotta do, church, to deny that cross, chastise that flesh. Don't give in to temptation. If you resist the devil, he will flee from you. All of our help comes from the Lord. Our strength comes from the Lord. So God has given you a way out. And the fact is, already made you victorious over sin. Sin should not be master over you. But just saved by grace. Take up your cross daily. Follow Jesus. Christ says in Matthew 10, 38, whoever does not take up their cross, follow me, it's not worthy. Christ is saying, there is not no cross in your life. There is no crown in heaven. What does the relationship with Christ mean to you? Does it mean enough to you for you to stop being so hard-headed? Stop being so stiff-necked? Stop being so rebellious? And deny that cross? Follow God? Or do you just need some more resistant training? Either way, you're going to do what God wants you to do. Does Christ mean enough to your church that you would in fact give yourself away to Christ, the Messiah? For Jesus wants you to take up his yoke and lay down your yoke and your burdens. Says my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Jesus, he wants to make an exchange with you. He wants to make an exchange with you. Take his yoke and lay down your yoke. Jesus says, take up his cross. Let Jesus lead you. For the word says, the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. Follow him, church, by his words. Follow Jesus by his word. Follow him by his way. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you want to go to heaven, better follow through Jesus. Jesus then tells the people, if you're trying to save your own life by your own works, then guess what? You're already dead. If you're trying to save your life by your works, then you're already dead. Son of man came into the world to save the world, not to condemn the world. The world, through him, might be saved. Your actions alone is not going to save your life. It took the obedience of Jesus Christ to die on that cross for our sins so that we could have life and life more abundant. Die, church.
God of angels to Abr Abram's, Abraham's bosom. Rich man died, but was buried, but he did not know Christ. The result was that the rich man was tormented and hated. Lazarus was the bad and his earthly life, but he was rich man in heaven, and his heavenly body. Rich man had wealth and his earthly life, but the poor, but when he died, he was poor, he was buried. And he lived in hate. Word says that the Lord will judge the quick and the dead according to his deeds on earth. What you do for Christ will last. What you do not do for him will not do you any justice. If your heart is not for Christ, whom the Son set free, is free indeed, it will do man no good, church. So make preparations on this earth, but not make preparations for their life in Jesus Christ. I just came to remind you that man is impressed without appearance. But God, he looks at the heart. Looks at the heart, church. God don't care nothing about what you're doing unless you give him your heart. Says the pure in heart shall see God. Prepare yourselves for the kingdom of God by denying yourself from the Lord. Point number two, live the gospel boldly. Live gospel boldly. Jesus, he makes it plain in verse 26. He does not need any coward Christians. God don't need no coward Christians. Jesus said that for whoever is ashamed of me, my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him who comes in his glory, and that the Father and of the holy angels. There is no reason to be ashamed of who you are in Christ. God has equipped you to stand boldly and speak his word over the circumstances in your life. Somebody here needs a breakthrough. Somebody here needs a break in their life. The power of your tongue to speak it. Speak life and not death over your life. Somebody here to speak over themselves. Need to tell themselves, I will not be defeated. I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because God has authority over my life. Because God, you said that if I am faithful of what you told me to do, I can ask whatever in your name, and it will come to pass. Because God, you said that what is in your hands, no man can pluck them out. Speak life, church, and over those dead situations. Speak it. If you're doing what God told you to do, it shall come to pass. Just because Jesus loves you as God loves him. Let your tongue speak power of the word of God. Speak it and receive it. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power in love and the sound mind. Pray yourself, kingdom of God, by living out the, the gospel boldly. Man said, he loves Jesus. Then folk need to see some evidence in their life. Jesus would heal the people on his journey. Various situations. He told them to go back and minister to the towns. If Jesus has done anything for you, then you need to go and tell it. Tell somebody what God has done for you. Don't keep it to yourself. Your testimony, your testimony, church, may help somebody make it over. Your testimony, God has done in your life, may help somebody have a breakthrough. Your testimony will let somebody know that they're not the only one going through something. Your testimony will help them. See, God, the word says that I am Shoppers are. Don't keep 
it said. Your testimony may be the breakthrough. Right. Where it says, Romans 1 and 16, I am not ashamed, gospel of, of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. To everyone that believes, lives the gospel boldly, church. Live it boldly. Don't be ashamed. Cost discipleship is telling somebody the good news. The good news is, the good news is, Jesus died, but he didn't stay dead. He rose for power to live the gospel boldly, lead by examples and word and conversation and charity and spirit. And faith and purity, which had about ten folk here. I don't mind praising God with me. Praise God. Come on, bless his soul. God has done anything in your life. I'm going to show some signs. Praise him. He's worthy, church, to be praised. God is worthy. God is worthy. If you love him, there should be some evidence. In your life. He's alive, church. He's alive. Because he lives within you. Praying yourselves for the kingdom. It's not easy. It's not easy. You're going to be in some uncomfortable situations. Jesus heals Peter's mother and he heals Peter's mother-in-law. And as Jesus was leaving, Crowds followed him. Right. A scribe approached Jesus uh -huh. and said, I will follow you wherever you go. Well. Jesus, let him understand that the mission that I am on is going to test your faithfulness. Right. The journey that I am going to will put you in an environment yeah. that may be harmful to your physical body, <laughs> but your spiritual body will be uplifted. Right. Jesus told him, Foxes have dens, birds of the sky have nests. The son of man has no place to lay his head. Church, if you're going to prepare yourself for the kingdom of God, then you're number one, you need to deny yourself, follow the Lord. Two, live the gospel boldly. Number three, remember the mission of the ministry. Remember the mission of the ministry. Of the ministry, Jesus wanted to let the, let the man know the road that you're going to travel down is going to be costly. All right. All right. How are you going to react right. when you're outside of your comfort zone? Yes, How are you going to react, church, when you're outside of your comfort zone? All right. Jesus is a sovereign king yes, who came down from God. That created everything. And if he did not create it, then it was not made. All right, yeah. Jesus, who is 100% man, 100% God, right, yeah. humbled himself, yes, sir. clothed himself, yes, rise right. of our nature, yes, right. described the memory. Jesus, that man, described the ministry. All right. It's a place that's going to take you. Out of your comfort zone. All right. All right, yeah. Jesus could have come into this world. Born in a palace. All right. But he chose to come as a poor carpenter son. All right. All right, yeah. So poor. Had no room in the inn. All right. All right. They wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Yeah. Feel that Jesus is telling the man in the ministry. That this ministry that you're seeking after. Is truly about. Seeking and saving the lost. Yeah. Church, can I ask you a question? How serious are you about God's ministry? All right. How serious are you about God's ministry? Just because you're out of your comfort zone, would that situation stop your drive and God's ministry? Will you press on if you have to praise God? All by yourself. Yeah. Will you keep on fighting? Yeah. Even if nobody else around you yeah. is Christ-like. Right, yeah. What if you hear some disturbing news right. in your
in your life. Yeah. Or even disturbing news within your church. Right. Yeah. When you fall out in faith. Or when you continue to say and tell somebody what Jesus says. Right, Lo, I am with you right. always. Right. Even right. to the end of the world. Right. Said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Right. Remember the mission yeah. of the ministry. Right. Yeah. It is easy to follow Christ. When you're going, and when everything is going as you expected it to go. But what about the times when you're in the storm? It's easy to follow Christ. And everything is going as you expected it to go. But what about those times when you're in the storm? In order to prepare ourselves for the kingdom of God, when times get rough, we must remember the mission of the ministry. Feel that God is looking for some folk that is going to endure to the end. He's looking for some people that's going to fight the good fight of faith. Being faithful in season, out of season. Times when you're going through a storm. Times you're being shaped and molded by the potter's hand. Times you're going through your storm. It's a time where you're Savior, shaping and molding you by his hands. How can you know the Lord is your strength that your faith has not been tested? How can you know that Jesus is the bread if you did not have to go without food? How can you know that Jesus would save your soul if you did not confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God saved your soul? How can you know, church, that God specializes if you never was in a Then you must remember the mission of the ministry. Verse 59, Jesus says to another, follow me. He says, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus responded by saying, and Jesus responded to him by saying, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go. You go and spread the news to the kingdom of God. What I received from the text is this. Even though the man in the text had a legitimate answer, his answer was legitimate, but he still did not answer Jesus correctly. He did not answer him correctly because he made an excuse. I thought about the text and it reminded, it reminded me of us Christian folk. It reminded me of the Christian church. God asks us to do something. And the first thing that comes out of our mouth is, Lord, I'm going to do it. But you let me take care of this and that first. I'm going to make my way to it. But just let me handle what's at the house first. I'm going to get to it, but let me just take the kids somewhere. I'm going to make it. But just let me take care of my husband at home. Just let me take care of my husband at home. God is asking us to do something. The first thing that comes out of my mouth is an excuse. All right. All right. God is looking for some folk he can count on church. Right. Stop living for God based on your convenience. Stop living for God, church, based on your convenience. Some of us have missions that we should have completed years ago. But we've made those excuses. And time has passed us by. In order to prepare ourselves for the kingdom of God, we need to let go of our excuses and start making some sacrifices. Remember the mission and the ministry. Jesus wants to be the first in your life. He does not want to be in your life based on your own time when it's convenient for your schedule. The Bible says that obedience it's better than sacrifice. Verse 61, 62, it says, Another also said, I will follow you, Lord. But first let me go and say goodbye to those in my house. But Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. What I received from the text is this. The disciple would have distractions from the world interfered with the work yep. they were doing for God. Yep. Yep. Stop letting outside sources right. interfere with what God is trying to do in your life. Amen. What God has for you is for you. Amen. You cannot be 
receive in heavenly God until you do what he asked you to do. Hallelujah. Although Jesus is being omniscient, he knew the response of the men. He still wanted to hear what they would say to him. He still wanted to hear the response he had for them in order to prepare ourselves for the kingdom of God. We need to learn how to stay focused. Be committed to the work of the Lord. Your commitment to God will send blessings your way. Jesus is calling some folk that needs to be sold out for him. I want to remind you that only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you do for Christ will last. Anybody here that, that loves the Lord, so glad that trouble don't last always. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Just stop by to tell you, St. Andrews, that the order to prepare ourselves for the kingdom of God, we need to deny ourselves. Follow the Lord. Live the gospel boldly. And all that you're doing, remember the mission of the ministry. Jesus, God's only one son, became a sacrifice for our sins. Paid a debt that I simply could not pay. Isaiah said, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. We should call him wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God is with us. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, held his glory, only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus came down 42 generations, born a virgin Mary, earthly father Joseph, circumcised eight days old, and a baby boy was given the name Jesus. On his eighth day, seen in the temple, the age of 12, listening and asking questions. 18 years later, found the Jordan River, baptized, John the Baptist, drawn to the wilderness, 40 days, 40 nights, tempted by the devil, surrounded by animals, and he was praised by the angels, took my Jesus, judgment hall, judgment hall. Treated as a murderer, told us the pilot asked the crowd, Whom do you want me to release? Said, Release Barabbas, the revolutionary man. Send Jesus to die. Crucify the one that's here. Save my soul. Jesus had to die because I, a man,
back to the church? Will you be ready when the roll is called? Will you be ready when the roll is called? Will you be ready? Come back. Yeah. Yeah. Dead in Christ the Rapture. Yeah. Carbon the Rapture. Yeah. So we forever be with him. Yeah.